Hey, thanks for stopping by. Now, while this video is about the duo, this is actually just a chopped up version of a recent live stream that I did. In that live stream, I talked about some lessons learned with the 2600 Duo and the Celestron C6. Now, what I did was I chopped out all the stuff related to the Celestron C6 and any general questions that might not have been related to the Duo at all. And the reason that I did this was I thought the information was still valuable and I wanted to make sure that if you were only looking for duo specific stuff, you still had it given to you. But going forward, I do have live streams planned and I have one coming up with some guests. So definitely swing by and check that out. But enjoy the video. Yeah, let me get into it. So when it comes to the 2600 and the duo, one thing that I thought about with the duo is the uh, focuser for the guide cam. I thought it would change things with the back focus. It really didn't. Uh, when you compare them side by side, here's the original 2600 MC, they're actually exactly identical. They're only like a tenth of a millimeter longer on the Duo. So, as you're going to find out here soon, uh, when you go to do your back focus, if you already have something like a 2600, just use the same spacers. Well, use the spacers that come with this, they're bigger, but yeah. So... Let me grab, real quick, there's a couple key differences of the Duo versus the uh, 2600. Switch this to grams. So the Duo is 741 grams, and the 2600 is 720, so where that would matter is if you're using, say, a telescope where you just borderline needing to use a different counterweight, the Duo weighs just a tiny bit more. So keep that one in mind if you're planning on getting one. Um, for the sensor, and let me switch it over to Siwa's page so you can see exactly what I mean by this. The uh, sensor on the Duo is almost exactly identical to the 2600. And if we look here, it's the same chip. It's the IMX571, which is a fantastic chip. Using it on both of these has been just an absolute dream with them. Uh, haven't really played too much with the video mode on the Duo yet, but apparently it's a little bit faster. Uh, one thing to note is that there is an extended full well mode, so that just means it's a little bit better at collecting photons than the original 2600 and there's a better buffer so when it's transferring your pictures to your ASI Air or your laptop it's a little bit faster but the big thing to keep in mind when you switch is that your adapters are much bigger so this is the one that comes with the Duo and this is the one that comes with the 2600 so if you need to buy a couple of the little adapter rings that go inside here make sure you do that um, I believe the Duo comes with one, so if you need extras, you might need to grab a few. Now, one thing that kind of concerned me at the start was focusing the Duo. So, when you use the Duo on... When you use the Duo with an autofocuser, run it so the main chip is focused first. And then after that, like I said... Whoop, wrong camera. This is the focuser for the guide camera. And the nice thing is, is that there's a stop point on both sides. So you're not gonna just keep screwing forever and ever. You will have a place to stop. And the nice thing about it too, let me take this off. The nice thing about it too, is that the tension on this is actually pretty good. So you shouldn't be too afraid of knocking it out at any point in time. Say you accidentally do let it slew to where it hits your tripod and it hits that, it's not gonna toss the focus off too much. It's pretty solid. Put this back in the bag. And, the, yeah, okay. And I'm looking at a couple notes to make sure I hit everything here. Uh, and now the guide camera chip is essentially the uh, 2200, uh, 20, 220 mini, uh, so all of these specs here for the mini, so the resolution, the ADC, all of that, it's unchanged entirely. All they did was just put it in the duo. 
And so far, out of the first couple nights of using it, it's a great sensor for guiding. But there are a few things that... <laughs> there are a few fumbles that I had uh, in the past couple weeks, and this is what we're going to go over. So earlier I mentioned that I had some problems, or I, I thought that the uh, guide camera's focuser would change the back focus, and it really doesn't. So what I'm going to do is show you real quick how everything looked. So let me pull this up real fast. Um, all right, so yeah. At home, real quick in my backyard before going up to Cherry Springs Star Party a couple weeks ago, I put the uh, the 16 millimeter spacer on. Or I'm sorry, the 21 millimeter spacer. So that's just this one. So there's two of them that come with it. And I put it on and everything looked fine. I don't know why it looked fine, but up to each corner, it was perfectly sharp. Okay. Then I was like, all right, well, what am I going to shoot? And I was like, I figured I'll shoot the uh, Veil Nebula. And using Stellarium real quick, this is what the framing looks like with the Duo. Remember, the 2600 is pretty much the exact same chip. And the Xenostar 61, I could fill the frame. However, things didn't go that way. Um, when I got up to uh, Cherry Springs, things looked a little bit more like this and you can see how the stars were a little bit off and yeah real bad but towards the middle it's not too shabby so that is a clear indication that the back focus was off unfortunately i didn't have the 16 mil with me so uh ben from the narrowband channel luckily had his with him so i was able to borrow it and even with both of them on, for some reason, I couldn't get it focused like perfectly with my back focus. I'm not sure why. So it just led to me putting on just the 16 and running with it. And then again, it still looked bad. So I decided instead of one shot like this, it would just be two shots. But as much as I played with these two panels in the past couple weeks, the stars won't merge on that at all. It's actually pretty horrible. So last week, I went camping with my brothers and some friends, and we knew that Saturday night was going to be at least a little clear. I figured, cool, I can bring the AM5 and the Duo and do some troubleshooting. And I did that. And when I got done, um, what I did was I went with one spacer, then the other, and then both. And I finally got the back focus dialed in. Now, there's a few things that I noticed. And I have to pull up a video here. When the back, back focus is off, this is pretty much what your guiding is going to look like with the guide chip in the Duo. It's not very good. And even though the stars on the chip are, are sharp, as we go ahead, my guide numbers up top here aren't that great. But as I went through and got things a little bit more dialed in, I think it's this one. Uh, middle here. Yeah. As the back focus got a little bit more dialed in, the stars started to look incredibly sharp on the guide camera. So back focus is key with this camera. If your back focus is off on the main chip, your guide camera is going to be completely off too. Now, in the process of switching the spacers around, I accidentally did one other thing. Um, and that's where this frame comes in. That big black circle, that's due. So, unfortunately, it didn't really go away. Uh, I ran this all night and yeah, the dew heater really didn't get rid of a whole lot because we surprisingly had it clear all night but the dew heater does work. Um, there's one thing in, in the settings for the camera where you can turn on and off the dew heater. I just wish that they would put in somewhere where you can say, hey, by default, just turn it on. Because 
if you live in a humid area like I do, you're going to need it. But on the bright side, looking at the stars there, everything looked fine. And this is what the final stack looked like. Now, unfortunately, because of the dew, the middle there is kind of blown out. But what I was concerned about was making sure everything else was fine. So this is just automatic background extraction ran on this stack. Nothing else done with it. And the stars on the corners look extremely fine. And this is, again, on the Xenostar 61. So any uh, refractor that is similar, you might have a similar experience. Just make sure your dew, your dew heater is on. <laughs> um, let me see what else do I got here about this. Oh, yeah. Wednesday night, I was going to go out and do one final test. But, yeah, if you live in uh, North America or anywhere, you know about the Canadian wildfires. So not much I can do about that. It was clear, but entirely unusable <clears throat> um scroll my notes here so so far my initial impressions with the duo and we'll get into the questions here in a little bit um with the duo on a refractor it's actually pretty great <laughs> after i dialed in all of those problems like i said make sure your back focus is good and uh once you have your guide cam focus, things will stay nice and sharp. But on a refractor, it's fine. However, I haven't put it on the C6 yet. That's going to come up soon. I'm going to be doing that in the next month. But the guide camera, one, uh, like I said, I was concerned about how to get it focused and all that. But really, once you have your main camera focused, focusing the guide camera is very simple. And when it all works together, it works seamlessly. So... Kudos to uh, ZWO, ZWO, whatever, you know, I like to call them these days. Um, it's a good camera under first impressions, but I still want to give it a couple months of giving it some work and seeing how good it actually is. Okay. And real quick, I'm going to grab... Do see some questions yeah i'm gonna get to those here in a second but i do want to grab one thing we're gonna talk about the c6 here in a second but <clears throat> uh before we get into that let me switch this back um i have been getting some questions on how you can support me uh outside of just watching the videos uh, i did just launch a patreon you are under no obligation to join it is completely your call if you do thank you but I have six tiers here, and I'm keeping the prices kind of small. Just, you know, I don't want to break anybody's bank. We already do it enough in this hobby. Uh, but the reason I chose Patreon is just in case there's ever a problem with YouTube, I still have a good way to uh, get some content to you. And a few examples of things that will happen is uh, at the $5 a month, I have a Google Drive set up with all of my images. Uh, except for ones that might be upcoming in a video or I'm still working on. Uh, you can practice with those as much as you want. Uh, at the $10 a month, we're going to do uh, group calls. So if you're having problems, maybe I might not have the answer, but somebody else in the group might. And I already have those scheduled. So up until the end of the year, I believe. And then uh, ultimately, my goal is to be able to Go around the state of pennsylvania and pres preserve cherry springs so that's what the high tier is is making sure i can get to that goal but like i said you're under no obligation uh if you want to join cool if not hey you know i get it <laughs> my uh comment thing isn't working right now i'm gonna have to fix that but so the go kid asked about using filters with the duo uh yes you will um in fact Give me one second. Just gotta grab something real quick. All right, sorry about that. So, I do believe nope. Okay. So, 
keep in mind that you're still gonna have to use a way to hold them. So, for example, uh, I would use the filter drawer, which I have here. Um, when you put a two inch filter over the duo, it's gonna look something like this. So, you can use it. There might, depending on how it's screwed in on your on your system, you might get just a little bit of the guide camera hitting the edge of the filter. But it'll work um, for like tri-band and dual-band filters, stuff like that. Uh, anything above uh, seven nanometers in uh, how much it filters, it'll still work. When you get into the like really heavy duty filters that are only letting in one wavelength of light through, the guide camera is gonna start having some problems. So using something like uh, Optolong L Enhance or even the L Extreme will still work. I think it's the L Ultimate that would cause a little bit of a problem with the Duo. Uh, I have to look at the specs on the Ultimate, but I believe that's the one. Same with uh, the Astronomic equivalents and stuff like that. One thing I forgot to mention about all of about the duo versus off-axis guiding versus um, using a regular guide camera with a guide scope, the duo is incredibly sharp <laughs> once it's dialed in. Um, if you've never used off-axis guiding, uh, this is the small one provided by ZWO, but uh, pretty much that little hole right there is all the guide camera has to work with. And considering that versus a regular guide scope, which, you know, it's a little 30 millimeter or whatnot versus the duo, which uses your main telescope. So <laughs> probably the best guiding numbers I've seen. Patrick asks about the auto guiding with the duo with a very narrow filter. Yes. Um, yeah, if you're using, I, again, I think it, I want to say it is the Optolong ultimate oh well, definitely that would do it <laughs> yeah so if you had this filter <laughs> there's no way you're going to be able to use it with the duo <laughs> three nanometers there's your guide camera is not going to be able to see a thing um let's see the extreme should be fine oh, where's the nanometers on this one How nice of you not to say. <laughs> yeah, the extreme you should be fine, but yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, okay, Patrick. You have the enhance, yeah, you're fine. Um, that's actually one of the ones I have too, and it's gonna get some work on the duo with the L enhance this year, so even the observatory that I go to, it's still Bortle five, six ish, so I still wanna use filters there. Kind of a bummer. Oh yeah, Zach, I see what you're saying about the, uh, the recession in there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that little bit of recession that happens in there where you screw your adapters in, you do got to take that into account. And that's not only that where you screw it in, but actually the space between the glass in front of the chip and the sensor itself, which... Luckily enough, ZWO is very kind to provide a good point for you to measure. So the line right here is generally where the front of the sensor is. So when you're doing your measurements, if you use this line, you'll be fine. And it's this, and it, one of the things that I didn't think was the same on the Duo, but it's actually exactly the same. I hope chopping this up was helpful for you. And if you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.